The wind howls across a frozen fjord in Norway. Year 1100, snow cut sideways through the dark. The air bites at 25 Avdiksers. Everything out there is locked in ice. Cut to now. A modern bedroom, soft lights, central heat, quiet comfort. But at 2 a.m., the warmth slips away. The air dries. Someone shivers under a thick blanket and wondering why the cold always wins. A thousand years ago, Vikings slept inside stone cells. No furnace, no vents, no glass windows. Just walls of granite and patience. And somehow, they stayed warm till dawn. How did those ancient stones hold their heat? While our insulated homes let it fade, let's open the night and see what the Vikings knew, how every stone, every wall was part of a natural machine for warmth. Each Viking stone cell was built to last through the kind of cold that makes breath turn to ice. The walls, nearly a meter thick, were stacked from ocean granite packed tight with moss clay and earth. To modern eyes, that looks brutal, cold, unforgiving. But the Vikings understood something we've forgotten. Stone isn't lifeless. It listens. It holds. And when treated right, it gives warmth back like a slow, steady heartbeat. By day when the hearth burned low, those thick walls soaked up heat. Every flame, every ember, every hour of sun, the heat sank deep into the stone's memory. And when the night fell, when the fire went silent, when the fjord wind screamed outside, the walls began to breathe, slowly, patiently, returning what they had taken. A one meter wall of granite can hold 12 hours of stored warmth. No vents, no wires, no fans, just physics and patience. Even after the last cold dimmed, the air inside stayed steady around 50 to 60 degrees. Not hot, not freezing, just alive. To the Vikings, this wasn't magic. It was respect. They called the stones keepers of the sun. To touch one after midnight is to feel the echo of day. You can almost hear it exhale. Modern homes, they warm fast, lose faster. We build thin light, efficient, and forget endurance. Our comfort lasts until the system shuts off. Theirs lasted until dawn. They didn't heat the air, they heated the night itself. To them, warmth was not a product. It was a relationship between Firestone and time. Their rooms held people. Their walls held memory. Stone remembers. Drywall forgets. The Vikings didn't build on top of the earth. They built into it. Each stone cell was carved halfway into a hillside or pressed against the damp soil of a fjord. From outside, you'd barely notice it, a low mound covered in grass, quiet and hidden. But inside, it was warm, still, safe. Modern houses stand proudly above the ground, floating in cold air like boxes on stilts. We call it progress, but the Vikings called it waste. They learned what the land already knew, the earth keeps its own steady temperature, about 50 degrees Fahrenheit all year round. The soil doesn't rush, doesn't freeze, doesn't change. It's nature's insulation free and constant. So they dug half their homes into hillsides, sealed the walls tight with stone and let the ground hug them back. Thick moss around the seams stopped the wind from sneaking in. A heavy grass roof above trapped stillness, keeping the air soft through the night. Inside, the temperature hardly moved a small, perfect microclimate, one that didn't need power, just wisdom. The Vikings weren't fighting the earth, they were living inside it. And that's the difference. We lift our houses higher away from the soil that could keep us warm. We try to dominate the cold with machines. They simply listened and the ground answered. If you lay a hand on a Viking wall, half buried in soil, you'll feel something breathing beneath. A quiet pulse, a patient warmth. Maybe that's what we lost, the comfort that comes from being part of the land, not above it. They let the world hold them through the night. We just build boxes in the wind. Inside a Viking stone cell, the walls weren't just solid, they were alive. In the glow of a tallow lamp, you could see it a soft white surface breathing in the cold, exhaling warmth. Over years, the lime turned golden tinted by smoke and breath. It looked simple, but it was genius. 
Modern walls are sealed shut airtight, painted wrapped in plastic layers. They trap everything humidity mold and eventually cold. We call it climate control, but what it really does is stop a house from breathing. The Vikings and later medieval builders did the opposite. They used lime plaster, a mix of lime sand and sometimes milk or egg spread thin across stone. That surface allowed vapor to move in and out. No condensation, no frost, no trapped damp. The walls stayed dry, the air stayed soft, the warmth lingered. In modern terms, it was a breathable wall system centuries ahead of us. Lime naturally kills, bacteria resists mold, and regulates humidity to around 50%, a perfect balance for human comfort. No machines, no dehumidifiers, just chemistry and patience. When a Viking exhaled into that small stone room, the wall took the moisture, held it, then released it slowly back as the air cooled, like lungs, like skin alive. Today, we spend fortunes on smart paints and climate membranes to do what lime has done for a thousand years. We call it innovation. They called it living right. Sometimes the old ways aren't outdated, they're just natural. Maybe that's what we've forgotten. That warmth doesn't only come from heat. It comes from balance, from walls that breathe, from homes that live. The Vikings had a secret they carved straight from the mountain. Soapstone or steatite, a soft gray rock they pulled from quarries across Norway, Shetland, and Greenland. At first glance, it doesn't look like much, but touch it after a fire and you'll understand. Unlike most stones, soapstone holds heat like a living thing. It absorbs energy slowly, then releases it back for hours, sometimes all night. Archaeologists found soapstone cooking pots and hearth slabs near Viking settlements, their surfaces scorched smooth from use. They weren't just for cooking, they were heat sinks, thermal batteries carved by hand. By day, those pots sat in the flame, heavy patient, drinking in warmth. When the fire was done, they were carried to the sleeping side of the cell, still radiating comfort into the night air. No flicker, no hum, just heat. Modern heating systems warm the air, quick, easy, forgettable. The moment the power cuts, the warmth vanishes. The Vikings didn't heat air, they heated matter. They charged their homes the way we charge a phone, only their battery was made of stone. A slab of steatite can store heat up to 12 hours after exposure to flame, stable, silent safe. Its dense structure resists cracking even under rapid temperature changes and radiates gentle infrared warmth long after embers die. Even by midnight, archaeologists measuring excavated steatite blocks found them still warm to the touch. This was low technology, high intelligence, a physics trick rediscovered today in masonry stoves and phase change heat systems. But the Vikings had it first. They didn't just survive the cold, they partnered with it. Each pot, each slab was a pact between fire and stone, between patience and survival. We heat the air, they heated time. And while our comfort fades, the moment we switch off the system, Theirs lingered glowing softly beside the bed, a warm stone heart in the middle of a frozen night. High in the cold north, every drop why of Vikings water could mean life or night, rot. That's why the Vikings and later the Icelandic builders trusted something simple birch bark. Hidden beneath layers of peat and sod, it formed the silent skin of their homes, a membrane between the storm and the hearth. Modern houses use plastic sheets and paint to block moisture. They seal tight, too tight. And when the warm air inside meets the cold roof above it, sweats. Condensation forms, mold spreads, heat fades. But birch bark was different. Each thin layer acted like armor against rain, yet still let vapor pass through. It was waterproof to liquid, but breathable to air. Moisture could move, not trap. The roof, in a way, could breathe. Builders stacked multiple sheets of birch bark, edges overlapping like fish scales. Then came a thick layer of dry peat and sod, on top insulation weight protection. 
Tests on surviving turf houses show how this combination stabilized humidity kept interiors near 50-60% moisture and prevented frost from forming on beams. A natural climate membrane, a thousand years before we named it. Inside, the air stayed dry, the wood preserved, and the temperature under the roof barely changed even when blizzards howled outside. We spend billions on smart vapor barriers and climate control paints. They just reinvent what birch bark already did perfectly. The Vikings didn't fight the weather, they understood it, they worked with it. Every roof was a lesson in humility that warmth isn't about sealing the world out, but letting your home breathe with it. Sometimes the simplest layer, a few sheets of bark, holds the deepest wisdom, because even a roof in the right hands can remember how to breathe. On the island of Leisu, Denmark, the wind tastes like salt, and the houses smell faintly of the sea. For centuries, people there built roofs not from timber or tile, but from seaweed, specifically a seagrass called eelgrass, washed ashore in long, soft ropes. They gathered it by hand, dried it in the sun, and packed it into walls and roofs. It sounds strange until you understand the science. Eelgrass has tiny air pockets inside each strand, creating insulation values close to modern mineral wool. But it breathes. It doesn't trap moisture. It doesn't rot of the salt preserves it. And remarkably, it's fire resistant. Yes, a roof made of seaweed that won't burn easily. Modern homes filled with fiberglass and plastic often trap humidity. When moisture builds up, the air turns cold, musty, unhealthy. The eelgrass houses stay different, warm, dry, and gentle to breathe in. Builders shaped bundles of eelgrass like pillows, seaweed cushions, then layered them thick across wooden frames. Some used eelgrass mats between turf and stone. Tests from the UNESCO Lay Siu Island Restoration Project found that eelgrass insulation can last hundreds of years in coastal air, keeping stable warmth and humidity. The material even adjusts with the weather. When it's wet outside, it holds warmth. When it's dry, it releases a soft, cool breath. Nature's own thermostat powered by the tide. It's almost funny, isn't it? We build with foam and fiberglass, pay for filters and air exchangers. While they, a thousand years ago, simply picked up what the ocean offered and let the sea keep them warm, sometimes progress forgets the shoreline because true sustainability was already floating at our feet. In the frozen winds of Iceland, warmth wasn't spread. It was protected. That's why Norse and Icelandic builders created the bath stofa, the warm core of the home. A single raised living room buried deep inside a maze of turf halls. It wasn't just architecture, it was strategy. Modern homes are open wide, airy, easy to heat, and even easier to lose heat. One open door and the warmth flees like smoke. But the Vikings understood air like warriors understand wind. They zoned their homes. They placed the sleeping and living quarters far from the entrance, elevated above ground and wrapped in turf and stone. When the outer door opened, the cold air rushed in, but it never reached the core. It died in the hallway in the Gangaber, the passage linking one room to another. Each door was a checkpoint, each wall a guard. Inside the Bethstofa heat gathered from people from lamps, from breath itself. Scientists studying turf farmhouses found that core rooms stayed around 15 to 18 degrees Celsius, about 59 to 64 degrees Fahrenheit, even when outside dropped below freezing. All because of placement, not power. Thermal zoning a thousand years before we had thermostats. They didn't heat the whole house, just the heart of it. Families ate, worked, slept, and told stories there under low timber beams and glowing oil lamps. Dozens of bodies one shared warmth, a living ecosystem of heat. We love our open plan homes, now spaces that look free but leak warmth through every vent and glass door. They built closed hearts, warmth layered behind patience and design. Maybe that's what we've lost. We built for space, they built for life, and as wind still howls across Icelandic turf roofs, those rooms' small, silent human still remember what comfort really meant. 
The Bath Stofa wasn't just a room, it was a philosophy. Warmth belongs where people gather, and sometimes to stay warm, you simply have to stay close. Dawn creeps over the fjord, pale light against stone and frost. A monk opens the door of his cell, and the breath of night still holds warmth. The fire is long gone, yet the air, still gentle, still alive. In our cities, we burn through the night, electric hum, endless heating. And still, by two in the morning, the room turns cold. The Vikings didn't fight winter with power, they danced with it. Their walls moved with the rhythm of heat and time. Stone didn't just store warmth, it remembered it. It waited, patiently. Maybe that's the secret we lost, that warmth isn't made fast. It's made right, heat slowly, and it will stay with you. And if stone could hold warmth through the night, what could wood do?